Good day, everybody. Uh, this is Blackheart6 again. Uh, we're going to do a new video series um, on how to create a dedicated server. So we, we've built our mission, and we like it. Scenarios works pretty well, and we want to we want to play with it with our friends, or we want to um, set up our own server so we can customize it and make it more controllable to our liking. Um, or you may run a, a a team or a clan or a unit, and you want to uh, play with it uh, there. So you have a couple options. Uh, you can do a locally hosted uh, server within the game. Uh, by going to multiplayer and then going create a local host uh, server, but that will not save, and I think you have to create it uh, from scratch every time. It's it's okay for small groups too, only like four to eight people, I think. Um, the other option you have is to pay ten to twenty bucks uh, a month um, and uh, use a company that will host a server for you, uh, a hosting company. Uh, you know that's that's good. It's got good hardware. The server uptime is probably very good on that, um, but it does cost you a monthly fee. Um, your other option is to take a, a computer uh, that you have at your house, and you can create your own uh, dedicated server. And that's what we're going to target in these videos: is creating a uh, dedicated server on your own PC in your house using your internet connection. Now, um, a couple things. One, I do not create a data dedicated server on the same PC that I game on. So you have to have a second computer. That's one, item one. Um, and that computer does not need to be uh, with an intense graphics card. Yeah, it does need a good processor, and you do need lots of RAM. Uh, so uh, I bought a little mini computer. Um, it's manufactured by a company called Geekcom. Uh, it works well. It was reasonably priced. It was less than $600. And I got a latest generation uh, Intel proc uh, with 32 gigabytes of RAM and an N uh, M2 uh, SSD. So um, I'm very happy with the way it works. It doesn't have a graphics card in it. It's integrated graphics uh, using Intel. Uh, but I don't need it. I don't serve up graphics as part of a server. So it's a low cost, you know, 20 bucks a month. I'll, I'll pay for this computer after a couple years of uh, use on it, and it'll save me the save me the the money. Um, so uh, my internet connection. The other thing to that is you have to have a good internet connection. If you are running, uh, you know, DSL, I don't think anybody's doing that. But uh, if you're running a cable or a, a, even a fiber optic system, uh, one of the key things there is you got to make sure that you have a symmetrical uh, network speed, meaning that your download and your upload speeds are equivalent, uh, symmetrical. So mine is a half a gigabit up and a half a gigabit down. So I can use that for, for serving um, some networks uh, or internet providers will only serve you a download speed of say 500 megabits and make your upload speed uh, 100 megabits and it, that's asymmetrical and i don't know how that works for actual doing gaming serve probably good enough um but i don't think you could get too crazy with like 64 or 128 players online with that so be aware of that um so that said, um, and I'm not going to cover it in this video, um, but to access my server, I must use what's called a VNC software. And that VNC software is viewed through a VNC viewer that is, this one is called Ripple. So I use tight, um, I use tight VNC and this is how I get to the desktop. I have no monitor, keyboard, or mouse hooked up to this. Um, so that said, uh, here's my desktop. The first step in this whole process is you got to get Steam command and you got to get it installed on your system. So open up my browser. Um, what you want to do is you want to install Steam command into a folder. Uh, I usually use the root directory. Um, so let's just create a new folder. OK, 
Okay, call it Steam Command. I've downloaded this file several times, so let's just get rid of some of these uh, extra ones. That way we'll go through that entire process. Okay, now, Steam Command, where do you get it from? So you need to download the file, do a search on Google, and it will bring up this, this website here, usually at the top, uh, Steam, Steam CMD. Click on it, and this is the wiki page for how to do and run Steam Command. Uh, it's got all the information in here you need to know. Uh, so we're going to do downloading Steam. You start at the top. So downloading Steam Command, and we're doing Windows, not Linux. Uh, Linux is obviously much different from Windows, and if you use Linux, well, then you can do it. You run it from here. Um, so download Steam Command for Windows. Create a folder for Steam Command, example, yada, yada, and then extract the contents of the zip to the folder. Um, but there's no link here. It doesn't really show you any kind of link or click here to get it. It's actually right here. It's the one. Uh, very, you know, I wish they would have put something a little bit more obvious. Uh, so we click on that. And you can see it's a very small program. And Steam Command, so what is it? It's the Steam Console Client, or Steam Command, is a command line version of the Steam Client. So it doesn't have the GUI uh, that you, the, you know, the nice interface that you get when you're on your gaming PC. Uh, it's strictly command line. So if you're not comfortable with using command line, uh, you, you, you need to learn about it. Uh, you need to learn and get comfortable with that. Um, so we're going to go to our downloads. i got two download windows open. I don't know why. And we're going to go, here's our Steam command. Now I'm going to unzip it here. So we're going to extract here. And then it creates this folder. So what we're just going to do is we're going to copy this executable out of there. Copy that. And then we'll go to our Steam command folder. Paste it. And then we're just going to double click on this. And it downloads everything that it needs. Just like a game. Okay. And then notice that once it runs, it, it puts us into what's called a Steam prompt. Okay. So, and to get out of that, you just hit exit and it closes the window for you. Okay. Now, um, you can run... Uh, the Steam command from here, uh, or you can run it from the command prompt. So uh, I don't think I can do. Let's just see something. Oh, nope. So to, to run that, boy. So we got to run it from here if we wanted to. And see, it checks for updates, and then it takes you into the Steam prompt. And then from here, you could log in. And we're logged in now um, to uh, Steam Command as anonymous so we could actually do all the work from here okay but we're not going to do it that way okay we're going to do it some some other way so what you want to do is be in your in your directory or your steam command and what you have to do now is in this next step is we're going to install uh the armor reforger server and then we're going to end this video at that point so what you have to get is the software And to do that, um, we're going to do a search, another search for uh, Armor Reforger um, Okay. So 
how to set up an armory forger, da, 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 yada, yada. Okay, this is um, from a company called Ionos, or Inos, however you want to call it. Let's see what they say. And here's some, they got some really good information here. So what this company is, is they do hosting, but they will give you a bare bones server and let you install it on it. You can go that route as well. Um, okay, install the Steam app, yada, yada, log in, force install directory, start the application. Okay, that's 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 one way to do it. Okay, but we, we, we can do this all in one step. So look for a Steam community guide on how to create an Armor Reforger server. And in here, they will have the command line you need to run your Steam command. And it's right here. Okay, this guy says create a file, create a batch file. You can do all that if you want. Okay. We don't need to do that. So I have a little folder here with server notes in it. So gonna... now they made a change to this. You must put the login after the install directory. So let's go over this little line here that I just created. Okay, force install directory. You're gonna change this. And in our case, we're not gonna put it on our desktop, never put it to your desktop. C server armor reforger server. Um, and the reason we're going to put this in a directory called server is because I run multiple servers. You might run Arma Reforger, Arma 3, maybe another game. Uh, Grey's, you know, uh, Grey Zone Warfare looks pretty good. Uh, Ground Branch is a very good game. Uh, so you may want to run other servers, and that's why you put it in. The, and then this way you can put all your servers in one directory. So we're going to force install directory to this one. We're going to log in as Anonymous Anonymous. And then we're going to run the app update. And this app number is the um, number that is assigned by Steam for the Arma Reforger server. If you go and you go to Steam ID Arma Reforger, here in this uh, Steam database, it will give you the number of the ID. Okay, so here we could type in Arma Reforger Server, click on that, and you can see that the app ID is that one that we're going to put in there, and it's considered a tool. So that's how they get that, and then it points to that, and it'll it'll download the correct files from there. So that's that's where that number comes into play. All right, so we and then what will happen after it up updates? It will quit the uh, the process for us. So we copy this line, and remember this line I got from that community page, but I had to put the login after the uh, install directory. Copy, and we go back to Steam command. We paste it, and what we're going to do is, this is where you can log in and do all this from within the command, or you can just type in CMD, okay, Steam command, and it will run this. And there it goes. So we'll let it go through its process and watch this. And then what we'll do is we're going to stop this video here at this point because we'll have an installed uh, server. Um, then I will prep and get everything a preparation for 
preparation for the uh, the next step, which will be configuring the server and creating a batch file needed so you can launch the server. You can launch it directly from the executable, but that's kind of a, a, a pain and it doesn't allow for any customizations. You want to uh, be able to launch it from a batch file, not the direct command line. We'll let this finish, it's gonna take a few seconds. And let's see here. So I should have a directory now called server and then Arma Reforger server. And it's probably, I don't want to click in there just yet. I probably could safely do it, but we'll just let it crunch, do its thing. It's verifying the update. There we go. So it tells you here's our app number fully installed. So we can close that. We'll close this one. Let's go check. And there we go. There's our server. Um, so if we ran it from here, uh, we would get an error right now. I can tell you that. Okay. So let's finish this video here. Thank you very much. Let me close all these windows out. Appreciate it. And we'll uh, serve up the next video. Thanks.